Hey everybody, Smart Silver Stacker here. In today's video, I'm going to be answering a viewer question about junk silver. That is 90% silver US coins minted in 1964 and earlier, specifically half dollars, quarters, and dimes. Now the question was from Denny Coakley, who posted this comment on my most recent video, writing, you have probably covered this before, but I don't understand face value of junk silver. I see five and ten dollar face value and I have no idea what I'm paying for. What is a fair price for junk silver? Thank you. Oh, thank you, Denny, for leaving this question because if this is a question you're asking, I'm sure there's a lot of other stackers out there who could use some clarification on this term face value. Now, I'm going to do my best to answer your question here. I have covered this in previous videos, but it never hurts to go back over the basics. And also, I'm going to talk about some of the most recent price action in the junk silver market because it's pretty interesting and it highlights some of the appealing characteristics that these 90% silver coins have. So first of all, face value. What is face value? Well, it's just the nominal value of these coins on their face because just like their clad counterparts that are still minted today, quarters and dimes and half dollars, even when they're silver, they are legal tender and they have a nominal dollar value. So it's pretty simple. Half dollars are worth 50 cents, dimes 10 cents, and quarters are 25 cents, just like the clad coins that are minted today. And to arrive at, say, $1 face value or $5 face value or $10 face value, all you do is you just add up the nominal face value of these coins. So for example, $1 face value could be two half dollars. It could also be four quarters or 10 dimes or you know any combination thereof that equals $1. So it could be uh, two quarters and a half dollar, for example. That would be $1 face value of junk silver or constitutional silver, 90% silver, whatever you wanna call these coins. Now, we're going to get into a little bit more, though, because you're asking what is the fair price for junk silver. So first, I think we need to establish how much silver is in these and then talk about how these coins get priced because it's a little different than other gold and silver bullion products. And if you find today's video helpful, please do give it a big thumbs up down below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And one of the best ways to support this channel is to support the channel sponsors. To do that, you can buy your gold and silver at SD Bullion. You can check them out with the link down in the description. And right now, new customers can get gold or silver at spot by visiting sdbullion.com slash new. So what's the difference between how junk silver gets priced and how, say, you know, a silver eagle or other forms of bullion get priced? Well, it does have to do with face value. And let's talk about other bullion products first. So a lot of bullion products are priced by the ounce, by the troy ounce, or possibly if you're doing the metric system, you might be pricing them according to uh, kilograms or grams. But the thing that these bullion products have in common, for example, a kilo bar, a uh, 20 ounce bar of silver or a one ounce coin or round is that they're all priced by weight, which is typically in troy ounces or like I said, in some metric unit. But junk silver is priced a little bit differently. It is priced by the face value. And so what that means is typically when you see the price for junk silver, it's not telling you how much you're going to pay for an ounce of silver. It's telling you how much you're going to pay for $1 face or, you know, $10 face. In this case, $1 face would be two half dollars or $10 face would be 20 half dollars. It'd be a roll of them or a roll of quarters would be $10. Or I think a roll of dimes is five bucks, you know, face value, but you get the idea. Now, how much silver is actually in these coins? That's an important thing to know if you want to figure out how much you're actually paying for the silver and not just for a premium to get these coins specifically. You know, if you want to compare, for example, the price for a silver eagle, which is priced in ounces, and junk silver, which is priced in face value. Well, these coins, they are predominantly circulated coins, but at the time that they were minted, $1 face value of these coins, whether it be dimes, quarters, or half dollars, had 0.7234 troy ounces of silver for every $1 face value. Now, again, these coins are a bit worn. Typically, they're circulated. These are coins that actually served as currency, and they traded hands quite a bit. And so, as you can see, a lot of these coins have some wear and tear to them. And that's why, as a general rule of thumb, 
it is assumed that $1 face value of circulated 90% silver coins or junk silver contains 0.715 troy ounces of silver. Now, you do have to keep in mind that if you get out your scale, they're going to weigh more than the silver content because they are 90% silver with the balance being copper. They're made of an alloy that makes them more durable so they can stand up to circulation. Now, we'll just take a look and demonstrate how much silver is in these coins. So if I've got $1 face value of, you know, fairly worn coins, they're not slick or anything like that, but they've got some, some circulation on them for sure, we can see that that comes out to about 0.796 troy ounces. And if I get out my kind of comically large calculator here, we'll do 0.796 times 0.9 because it's 90% silver. And you can see that those two half dollars contain about 0.7164 troy ounces of silver. So that's pretty close to that 0.715 number. And then just to kind of demonstrate how uh, Non-worn coins are a little bit different. This is two uh, Kennedy half dollars from 1964. They have very little wear on them. And you'll notice that, you know, the older coins tend to have more wear because the thing about Kennedy half dollars that were minted in 1964, a lot of people started pulling those out of circulation uh, pretty shortly after they were minted. Whereas, you know, half dollars like these, uh, Walking Liberties, this was minted in 1943. Nobody was hoarding silver coins until at least the 60s, so that had plenty of time to circulate and get some wear on it. But you can see these two coins have about uh, 0.808, that's the troy ounce weight for the coins, and then if we multiply that by 0.9, we can see these are very close actually to the original silver content of 0.7234 ounces, just 0.7272. So those have very little wear on them. And then one more example of this just to give you an idea of how some of the more worn coins now these are uh, 10 mercury dimes so these are the older uh, dimes not uh, the roosevelt's the modern more modern newer coins so those have 0.786 troy ounces of weight to them and then if we multiply that by 0.9 you can see that those contain about 0.7074 troy ounces of silver so there is quite a bit of variation in these coins depending on the amount of wear. But the rule of thumb is if you've got a big mix of them and you take you know, a dollar face value at random, you're gonna have about 0.715 troy ounces of silver. And the reason that these get priced by face value rather than by weight is precisely because of that fact that a lot of the coins have some wear and so they're not all gonna be exactly the same weight. Now, what's a good price for junk silver? Well, that's kind of hard to say. Uh, you know, I did a video a few weeks ago, uh, premiums on junk silver had come way down. I think you could get a dollar face value for 17 or 18 bucks. And uh, I just pointed out that that was a great opportunity at the time to accumulate some of this stuff. And I did stack a little bit of it. I, I wish I had gotten more when premiums were so low, though, because we really only had a very short window. And as soon as this stuff with uh, SVB and Signature Bank kicked off, you know, we've seen the premiums on silver products rise across the board, but junk silver, as usual, has been one of the first products to sell out and to become harder to find, and also one of the products that has had the premiums spike up on them the most. And we're going to go over some of the prices of both what dealers are paying for junk silver right now and what they're selling it for. The decline in premiums that we had seen just a couple weeks ago was a very short window because last year we had a big uh, drop in the price of silver, the spot price, and we saw premiums on junk silver coins absolutely explode. I think at the peak back in, uh, I'm not sure when it was, maybe August or September when the, the silver lows were in, the, the premiums for junk silver were something like 50 to 60% if you wanted to buy some. And this fluctuating premium, really it is one of the most compelling reasons to have some junk silver in your stack. Now let's talk about why the supply of these things always seems to be the first thing to run out. Well, the big reason, I mean, it's very simple, is that they have not minted these coins in six decades or so. And so the supply is very limited. Uh, there's an article I've covered before in this channel, but it's one that if you haven't read it, it's worth reading. It's called After the Melts. You can find it over the PCGS website. Uh, it's written in 2001. I'll put a link down in the description. I'm not gonna go into it in too much depth here, but 
It's an interview with a coin dealer, this guy Leon Hendrickson, who is the proprietor of a business called Silvertown in Winchester, Indiana. And I think, you know, at the time this article was published in 2001, he was kind of an old timer then. So this guy had seen it all and he operated this business in the 70s and the 80s. He calculates that during 1979 and 1980 alone, that was when we saw a big spike up in the price of precious metals, Silvertown, his business alone processed thousands of bags of junk silver coins that got sent to refiners and got melted down. And he's quoted as saying, I was part of it, so I can't point the finger at anybody else. I was just as guilty as anybody else, but that was the way everybody operated back then. That was just the way coin dealers had to do business. And so a lot of these coins got melted down. Now, nobody really knows how many of these are still out there, but the fact that they always seem to uh, dry up so quickly, and the problem is getting worse, the supply problems with junk silver, as one would expect it to, means that, you know, the supply is probably a lot less than what was actually minted in the first place. And that was in 2001 that that article was written. But since then, we've also seen silver spike up back in 2011. I'm sure that more of these coins were lost to refiners at that time. And, you know, as far as stacking goes, it's always good to be able to get your hands on a bullion product that can no longer be made because the possibility of seeing significantly high premiums on it uh, is, is very possible. And right now we are seeing higher premiums on these coins. Uh, we can take a look at SD Bullion right now. They've got half dollars. That's all the junk silver they have in stock right now for $26 for $1 face value of these coins. Now again, just a couple weeks ago before this banking crisis thing kicked off, $1 face value, I think at the bottom was going for 17 or 18 bucks. So that's a pretty big percentage move over a very short period of time. And it's not just the price that bullion dealers like SD Bullion are selling these coins for that have gone up, if you can even find them. It's also the price that they're buying them back for. So we can go to the SD Bullion buyback page and you can see right now they're paying the spot price of silver plus five bucks per ounce for half dollars. That's about $20 per $1 face value. Or if you have quarters or dimes, they're paying $4 over spot. So that comes out to about 19 times face value. Spot price is around 16 times face value. So they're still paying a pretty significant percentage over the melt value of these coins if you go to sell them today. And of course, you know, $26 if you want to buy it or $20 if you want to sell it, it is kind of a wide spread. But this is not SD Bullion being greedy, and I mean, I'll go over why not, because it's demonstrable here in just a moment, but this is a symptom of a market with an incredibly limited supply, because I mean, the reason that they're charging $26 for half dollars is, I'm sure if they were to lower the price at all, they would immediately sell out of their inventory. In fact, they're one of the few dealers right now that has some. I mean, that can change from moment to moment. You know, they were completely out just a few days ago. Someone must have come into the market and sold them some. But, you know, when you're in business and you're managing an inventory, one of the things that you do is if you constantly keep selling out of something you can't meet demand is you raise the price. This is supply and demand. You know, this is how market equilibrium is achieved. And we can demonstrate this just by looking at 100 ounce bars over at SD Bullion. Right now they're selling 100 ounce bars, the best price you can get per ounce, about $26.40 from them. And they're actually paying over spot for these 100 ounce bars too, paying 40 cents over spot. So that brings you close to $24 per ounce that they're paying. So that's a spread of $2.50. It's less than half of the spread uh, between the buyback price and the sale price for junk silver. And again, this is because there is an ample supply of 100 ounce silver bars and there's not uh, you know, an implicit shortage in the market. And every time demand for physical silver gets bumped up in any way, shape, or form, junk silver is the first thing to disappear. And you know that can be kind of a daunting thing if you're trying to stack more of these coins, but it's great if you already have a lot of junk silver because it means that you know, the value of your physical silver coins, they're going up faster than just the spot price of silver. And uh, you know, one thing I will be looking for is, I don't know, who knows, maybe we'll, we'll never see another pullback in premiums. That was a very short-lived one. But if we do, I'm definitely going to be taking advantage of it and adding more to my junk silver stack. You know, am I buying now at $26 face value? Well, no, that's not the time to buy. You know, that's the time maybe to unload some junk silver. Now, I'm certainly not doing that for $20 face value. I'm just going to hold on to this stuff. But uh, I'm not going to stack anymore while the premiums are high. But, you know, you, you got to realize that eventually, someday, 
on junk silver coins because they're not making anymore. So the supply is what it is and it's shrinking because these coins get lost, they get melted, etc. Uh, one of these days, the premiums on these coins will go up and it will never come back down. And I can remember one of the first local coin shops that I used to shop at. Uh, the guy was an old timer. The shop has since closed. He's retired, I'm sure. He would tell me, I was going in there maybe uh, 12, 11 years ago, and I was buying silver dimes and junk silver, you know, a couple bucks at a time typically because I didn't have a ton of money to stack and I was just, you know, buying some small denomination silver coins. But he told me stick with those because one day those junk silver coins are going to each have an individual numismatic premium, even for common dates. Now, we're not quite there yet, but the premiums on these certainly have risen drastically in a percentage basis over the past couple of weeks and you know maybe we'll see a little bit less demand if uh, the banking crisis uh, settles down a little bit then maybe we will see an opportunity to get into junk silver at low prices again but if we do get that window it'll probably be a short one so uh, you know it's not financial advice but if you do see lower premiums and you want to take advantage of that you'll probably have to move fast and all of this is just another reason that junk silver is a great thing to have in your stack I mean, it's an awesome piece of history. It's really good fractional silver if you're looking for something to potentially barter with and, you know, an SHTF type scenario uh, because it's smaller than one ounce. I mean, a dime is about as fractional as you can get. 0 0.0715 troy ounces of silver in one of these dimes. So a very nice, small, highly divisible, very recognizable form of silver. Uh, and this stuff's awesome. And I hope that that helps to answer that question for you, Denny, about... You know, what is a fair price to pay for silver, junk silver, and also what does the face value mean? Leave me a comment down below if you have any further questions on junk silver or any kind of bullion related matters. And thanks for watching, everybody. Always do appreciate everybody out there who watches. I will catch you next time. Stay safe and happy stacking, everybody. Smart Silver Stacker out.